So good morning. Uh, w- welcome again to Troy United Methodist Church. My, my name is Andy. I know you haven't seen me in a while, uh, other than on video there. So, but but uh, I'm really glad you're here today. I am really glad to be here today. It has been over a month since I preached, um, at least to people, uh, preaching my heart a lot. <laughs> and and I, I just have to say I am so grateful uh, for uh, the the extended time to focus on on big picture, long term kinds of planning things that uh, uh, that that often get pushed aside during a normal week uh, when uh, sermon prep is is calling, and I pour my heart I- into that. And and wow, I, I know that I can take a, a break like that from time to time because we have so many great preachers uh, among us, uh, and I am thrilled that you get to uh, be taught and encouraged by them. And and I personally, I, I was blessed uh, by. Uh, some of those great stories of faith from each of them, too. I mean, Bonnie uh, get, helped us see the possibility of Cain's story being rewritten to h- display the same faith as his brother Abel, and that should give us all hope because uh, in all of us, I mean, we've all got a little Cain in, in all of us. And, and Dan gave us encouragement to take God at his word, uh, just like Noah did, Uh, Tim inspired us to faithfully live our lives, to leave a legacy the way Abraham did. Uh, Christine shared the story of Rahab, reminding us that our past doesn't have to define our future. And and Winifer, oh, I I am so proud of Winifer. She was the only non-staff preacher during this series, and she reassured us that despite our fear, maybe even our anger, if we courageously follow God's call like Moses did, then we will experience God's favor. What great examples of faith that each of them shared with us as we go deeper into the hall of faith, Hebrews chapter 11. And I have been looking forward to today when I get to share the significance behind the story in verse 30 of chapter 11. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. The walls of Jericho. Uh, You you may be somewhat familiar with the story of the Israelites under Joshua's leadership, conquering the city of Jericho. Uh, You can read all about it in Joshua chapter 6. But let uh, let me do a little background here. Let me bring you up to speed. Moses had been leading the Israelites in the wilderness for over 40 years since they had left Egypt. Um, And in his final days, he led them to the edge of the promised land on the the east side of the Jordan River. That's on the the far right-hand side of this map that you see. Moses led them to, you can kind of see the the, uh, River Jordan uh, leading into the Dead Sea. and, And Moses had led them up to the right side, the east side of the Jordan River. And then he died. And he passed the baton of leadership on to Joshua. And Joshua then, he sent two spies across the Jordan River to the city of Jericho, which is smack dab right in the middle of that map. That's where they met Rahab the prostitute. We heard her story a couple of weeks ago. And and you can see their path that they traveled uh, on this map. It was the the yellow uh, line from the right to the, the middle of the map there. Joshua after sending the spies, then he led the Israelites across the Jordan River. And I might say in miraculous fashion, like Moses led the people across the Red Sea. The waters parted and they walked across on dry land. Uh, The the Israelites then set up camp in Gilgal, which was a small village just outside of Jericho, where they worshiped God and they prepared for this eventual battle. Now, before this map disappears, uh, I want you to kind of take a look at it, the the topography, uh, kind of the the mountains, the valleys. You see the valley right around Jordan River there. I want to point out the significance of Jericho. The, The city of Jericho guarded the only routes over the mountains into the central part of the promised land. There was no avoiding it. It, it. If Joshua were was going to to lead the Israelites into the promised land, they had to take Jericho. There was no way around it. It it was the only way. Okay, 
you know the rest of the story, maybe. Most of you probably do. You, you may even have the song stuck in your head, right? So, so help me out here. Uh, just join in. I, I want to hear a chorus. Uh, no, this is not a solo. Uh, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the... Yes! By faith, the walls fell. Uh, could it be, just like the song that we sang, could it be that there are some walls that you would like to see fall in your life? Some obstacles. Obstacles in your path to living the life that you know that God created you for. And maybe for you, it's a relationship obstacle or maybe a, a money obstacle or, or an emotions obstacle. Possibly a wall of grief or a wall of sin stands in your way. Wouldn't you like to see a breakthrough? Uh, wouldn't you like to have the, the same kind of of wall-crumbling faith that Joshua and the Israelites had so, so that nothing could stand in your way, that those walls in your life would come tumbling down. I mean, really, what, what was this faith that they showed? By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army marched around them for seven days. I mean, do, do we have to put on our marching shoes? Is that what this is all about? We gotta uh, walk around the building? What, what, what do we need to do? What is this faith they displayed? And is it possible that you and I can display this kind of faith too with the, the same kind of results that we hope to see in our lives? I think so. I, I, I think you and I can display the, the same kind of faith that Joshua and the Israelites did. And, and when we live out this kind of faith, there isn't a wall that can stand in our way, at least not for long. But displaying this kind of faith, living by faith, the way Joshua and the Israelites did, it requires something of us. You see, before the walls fell, some other things had to happen. So let's take a look at this story a little bit closer. Uh, before the Israelite armies marched on Jericho, Joshua had a very interesting encounter that we read about at the end of, jo of, of Joshua chapter 5. So if you have your Bible with you or, or have your, your scrolling screen, uh, uh, slide it on up to Joshua chapter 5, verse 13. Uh, Joshua he, he must have been just outside the camp at Gilgal. Maybe he was scouting out the walls of Jericho before the next morning's battle. Uh, not sure. But we know uh, the scripture reads that while he was, was outside the camp, he looked up and he saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us? or for our enemies. So Joshua encounters this warrior with a sword and, and wanted to know who he was for. Well, was he for Joshua? Or, what, or was he for Jericho? Uh, that's a good response right there. You know this story. Jo Joshua asks, I think, what, what we would want to ask. Hey, are you... Are you for us or are you against us? Are you on our side or are you on the side of our enemies? Are you here to help me or are you here to hinder me? In fact, these are questions that most of us, I think, uh, ask God in the depths of our hearts when things aren't maybe going the way we want, when, when there's an obstacle in our way. God, are you, are you really on my side? I, I'm facing this obstacle. Why won't you remove it? Why, why won't it fall? Are you really for me? Because it kind of feels like maybe you're against me. And, and what does this man, 
who we find out is a messenger from God, the commander of the Lord's army, how does he reply to Joshua's question? Uh, Are you for us or for our enemies? Verse 14, neither, he replied. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Neither, he says, neither. I'm not for you nor against you. In fact, the most literal translation of this reply is simply, no, (laughs) no. It's almost like he's saying, you know what, Joshua, you are asking the wrong question. No, I am not for you. I'm not against you. You know, Joshua wants to know, I think we want to know, God, are you for my plans or are you against my plans? God, are, are you on our side or are you on the side of our enemy? But God's messenger is telling Joshua the same thing that I think he wants us to hear. No. I, I am not here to serve your plans or your agenda. I'm here to see if you are willing to be my servant, to serve my agenda. And the walls of Jericho fell because by faith, Joshua responded this way. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Now, I've, I've taught on this passage before. In fact, I, I did a few years ago here briefly, and, and, and uh, you might recall if you were here at that time that, that I don't think that this was just some mere messenger angel of the Lord. I believe this was Jesus himself, the commander of the Lord's army, appearing before Joshua. You know, angels throughout the scriptures, angels don't make ground holy. God does. And and we read just a couple of verses later that it's actually the Lord who is speaking with Joshua. I think this was Jesus. The the, the Bible doesn't say that. It doesn't make that 100% clear. Uh, But you know what? The Bible is 100% clear on this. Uh, Before the walls of Jericho fell, Joshua had to fall before the Lord. In fact, it's the exact same word here in chapter 5, verse 14, describing Joshua falling before the Lord as it is in chapter 6, verse 20, describing the walls of Jericho tumbling down. Same word. To fall. To fall, to collapse. Before the walls fell, Joshua had to fall before the Lord. And the same is true for you. Before any walls fall in your life, God's got to know that you are his servant and not the other way around. You've got to surrender your agenda for his. See, I told you it would require a little something of you. You've got to fall before Jesus. But that's not all. Uh, We find at the beginning of Joshua chapter 6 that that the Lord now gives Joshua some instructions. Here here are these instructions. Uh, Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark, On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. Yeah, I I love this. The Lord says, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. I've already done it. 
The, the rest is really just formality. You know, when you have surrendered to the Lord, really surrender, when you have fallen before the Lord, he does the real work, but you still have a part. Uh, Joshua gets these, I mean, let's face it, these are crazy instructions from the Lord, aren't they? They're, they're a little ridiculous. They, 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 they're like, what? Well, that's what you want us to do? Uh, he gets these crazy instructions from God. And then the rest of chapter six, we, we read that Joshua obeys them. He carries out the commands of the Lord and the walls fell. Now, uh, here's the big idea, friends. Before the walls of Jericho fell, Joshua fell before Jesus, the commander of the Lord's army, and he was obedient to his commands. Before the walls fell, Joshua fell before the Lord. Before the walls fell, Joshua was obedient to the Lord's commands. And, and what led him to do that? Faith. By faith, the walls fell. Folks, hear, hear, hear this loud and clear. Joshua's action of faith was submission and obedience to God's authority. There, there are certain walls in your life, barriers that will not fall. Largely barriers right in here. Barriers in your life that will not fall until you fall before the Lord in submission and obedience. And even when you do that, uh, when, when you're submitted to God, when you're obedient to God, you may find that the walls that you want to fall aren't the same ones that God is really wanting to fall. And th this is all difficult to come to terms with, isn't it? That God doesn't exist to fulfill all of your hopes and dreams. That God isn't a servant of your plans, your agenda. Rather, God created each of us to be a part of his plans, his story, his agenda, his mission of reconciling the world to himself, to be his representatives in this world, reclaiming and redeeming all that has been lost. Now, of course, that comes with some pretty amazing fringe benefits for us, doesn't it? I have freedom from sin, peace that passes all understanding, joy that no grief or loss can steal, patience to endure the struggles of this life, true rest in Christ, purpose and meaning and fulfillment, and, and yes, hope beyond the grave. I mean, all, all of those things that, that, that money cannot buy, but it starts when by faith we fall before Jesus in submission and obedience. Yeah. Jesus basically said as much well, to those who were considering um, following him as, as his disciple. It, it, may, maybe you remember uh, very famous words of Jesus. Matthew chapter 16. Jesus said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. I mean, isn't that the same call? I think it is. That's just another reason why I think it's, it's Jesus who shows up to Joshua. Because it's, it's, it's the same call, really. Are, are you for me or against me? No, 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 no. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, must, must surrender their agenda for mine. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. You know what? It's, it, it's, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. It, it will likely mean suffering for you. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow me. Be obedient to me. Follow me. That's what it means to be my disciple. And you know what? When you do so, when you give up your life for me, you will find true life, life that you were meant to live from the beginning. 
And then a, a little bit later in the book of Matthew, Jesus gives his disciples a commission, a, a command, uh, what it means to be his followers. It, it's, it, it's somewhat crazy instructions, almost like Joshua received. It's known as the Great Commission. It's a, a command for his disciples to obey. It's what it means to follow him. He tells them, he tells us, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Those were his marching orders. Uh, let me ask you a difficult question. And it's one that I've asked myself. And, and you know what? I, as difficult as this might be, I want, you to, I want you to raise your hands in response to this question. This is, this is Jesus' call, right? Uh, to be his disciple or to deny ourselves. Take up our cross. Follow him. We're to go into all the world and make other disciples. So let, let me ask you, how many of you can say, in the humble confidence of your own heart, that you are a true disciple of Jesus? If yes, then, then raise your hand. Okay. It's a hard question to answer, isn't it? How about this question? Raise your hand if you can say yes to this. In the humble confidence of your own heart, can you say that you are a true Christian? Friends, why is that question easier to answer? What if I told you that neither Jesus nor the Bible make a distinction between being a disciple and being a Christian? You're only a Christian if you're a disciple of Jesus. They're supposed to be the same thing. Folks, there are certain walls in your life, barriers preventing you Barriers preventing you from experiencing that elusive freedom and hope and peace and joy and endurance and rest and purpose and meaning and fulfillment. Th those barriers will not fall until by faith you fall before Jesus in submission and obedience to his call to be his disciple. And if you want that, if you are ready to respond, ready to do just that, to fall before Jesus and surrender your will for his, to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow him and to do your part in making disciples. You know, I, I don't care if you already consider yourself a Christian. If you are ready, or at the very least want to be ready to be a disciple of Jesus, then I invite you to come forward during communion. Just bring your elements uh, right up with you uh, to the front. And uh, if, if you're able, um, physically able, to find a, a place to just kind of kneel before, before Jesus. The same way that Joshua knelt before the commander of the Lord's army. Not me, just Jesus somewhere, you know, <laughs> the presence of God uh, over here. I, I, I'll be on my knees too. Being a disciple of Jesus starts with a conscious decision of the will. Will you respond 
with faith the way Joshua did when he fell on his knees before the Lord. You know, don't waste another minute of your life trying to make those walls fall until you fall before Jesus and submit to his call to being his disciple. Folks, this isn't the only step of faith in being a disciple of Jesus. There, there will be many, many more to come. But this is a necessary first step. Will you take it? I pray you take it. Let's pray together. Lord, we, we have heard your call to be your disciple. Many of us, we have stopped short of that call. Oh Lord, you've touched our hearts. We know you love us, that you forgive us. We have the hope of eternity because of what you've done for us. But we still oftentimes think of you as a God who serves our agenda. And when you don't come through the way that we hope, we, we wonder if you really are for us or maybe against us. Lord, we confess that we too easily become self-centered around our desires and our agenda. And we have often neglected your call to discipleship, to deny those things, to take up our cross, to follow you obediently, and to make disciples of others, teaching them to obey everything that you've taught us. Or we confess that we have mistakenly thought we could be Christians without being disciples of Jesus. And maybe you want to make this your prayer today. Lord, by the power of your Spirit in me, I pray for the courage to do the same thing that Joshua did to fall before you in submission and obedience. Yes, I may have considered myself a Christian, but I'm not sure if I have truly responded to your call to discipleship. Today, I'm ready to respond, to make a commitment to take those next steps with the help of my church, with the help of those around me, to take those next steps to live as your disciple. To not just give you my heart, but to give you my life. And you know what, if that's you, regardless of how long you've considered yourself a Christian, I invite you to show your, your commitment to that next step to begin living as a disciple by, by just bringing your, your elements, your communion elements down to the front, finding, finding a place, maybe at our prayer stations on the side to find a, a place to kneel before Jesus, just like Joshua did. You can come forward now as we continue in an attitude of prayer. Oftentimes when you make a, when you want to make a real change, it requires a step of faith. By faith, Joshua fell before the Lord in submission and obedience, and the walls of Jericho fell. That was a defining moment in his life. October 3rd, 2021, this could be a defining moment in your life as you fall before the Lord and respond to his call to discipleship.